Welcome back to the channel everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on another video. My name is Nico and this is the N52 out of my 3 series BMW. N52 means inline 6, 3 liter, naturally aspirated. However today we're going to be focusing on the oil filter housing gasket because the gasket has actually developed a leak and as you can see right here we got a little bit of oil there right in here and as well as underneath so basically when you're looking from underneath the car you can see that on the driver's side front portion of the engine oil is leaking down so it's a pretty straightforward job not too complicated however there's one little thing that you're gonna have to pay attention to that i'm going to get to in a little bit so without further ado let's get right into the video game plan first things first air box has to come out two coolant hoses right here that need to be drained and disconnected then we have two more electrical connectors that need to be removed. And then we have one and two e-torx. These are E10 e-torx bolts that need to be removed. And then one that is a little bit tricky to get to. It's underneath the intake manifold. From what I understand, the workshop manual actually calls for the intake manifold to be removed. However, that is not necessary. You can use a quarter inch E10 Torx. You're gonna probably gonna have to order it online or something. I was not able to find it locally anywhere but it is possible. And if you cannot find one of those, you can also use a universal socket. I found that to work as well. There's not a lot of torque on these, so you should be just fine. That's the game plan. So let's get right into it. Removing the air box is pretty straightforward. We have two 10 millimeter bolts right here on the side. And then up here, we have a electrical connector that needs to be undone, as well as a hose clamp that you need to loosen in order to be able to remove the box. Once you've undone those, you should be able to remove your air box very carefully, not to damage anything around here. And now, if you want to, this is not necessary. You can remove the front. I don't even know what this is, like a snorkel? It's like an extension of the air intake. You need a T20. There are two bolts right here, one on either side. Once you've undone these, you should be able to slide this intake plastic or snorkel out of the way. The next thing we're gonna deal with is this coolant hose right here. I cut apart an old coolant bottle and I'm gonna put this somewhere around here in order to catch the coolant that is about to spill out. We're gonna remove this little retaining tab right here with a pick tool. There you go. And at this point, we should be able to very carefully pull off this hose. Let's make sure we don't break anything because this plastic tends to become very brittle over time. There we go, okay. So I got it at this point. So I'm gonna try to not make too much of a mess. Oh boy, this is not working the way I want it to. Okay, here we go. So one, two, and... Almost three. Yeah, you can hear it. <laughs> There's a lot of it going on the ground, but not too bad, honestly. Could have been worse. Look at this. I caught quite a bit. Not bad. Not bad. Cool. It's looking pretty good, actually. Can see all the way to the bottom of the bottle, but obviously we're not gonna be using any of this. We're gonna be putting in fresh coolant. One more minor but important detail is this electrical connector. You simply push the little tab and then pull it out the back. Go ahead and just tuck that away. Don't forget to reconnect it later, obviously, but now we're ready to start addressing the bolts that are holding the housing on. All right, it looks like we're ready at this point to remove the E10 Torx bolts. So we got this top one right here. This one's probably gonna be pretty messy. A lot of oil, it's just been building up 
over the miles as your leak is leaking. So we're gonna get this guy out. There we go. That only took forever. Here's the little guy. And then up here, we have the other one. This one's gonna be a lot longer. There you go, much longer bolt. So let's talk about the most difficult one. Okay, so as I was saying earlier, you have a couple options. You can get a E10 if you can find a quarter inch E10, or you can do what I did, and that is get a universal socket. I don't know if you can see that, but this is one of those magic universal sockets that apparently work on everything. I've had really good luck with them personally. I do not recommend them just because they technically aren't the right tool. However, using one of these universal ones, this is a size eight cobalt. I don't know if you can see that right there. Quarter inch swivel joint, whatever, and an extension. This does the job perfectly for this particular application. So do as you will. This is what I'm doing. This helps me not have to take out the entire intake manifold. Other people have done different things, similar things. You do as you please. I will say it does work. All right, last bolt, here we go. You take a contraption, you feed it in through this little opening right here and very easily and smoothly seat your socket onto this top bolt. Right now it's perfectly on. So with a little bit of force, there you go. You, as you can see, the whole assembly is already moving. Uh, I should probably get a couple rags under there because there most likely will be a lot of oil spilling out. So I'm gonna get some rags and then we're gonna finish removing this bolt. But as you can see, we're almost there, so. Let's get a couple rags underneath here. I don't know how much that's gonna do. We're gonna have a lot of cleaning to do regardless, but I'm gonna finish pulling out that bolt. Apologize, my arms are in the way as usual. All right, here we go. So bolt is out, and at this point, we have the assembly completely out. Look at that, there it is. Nice and easy, pretty straightforward. Let's get this out of the engine bay and let's get this cleaned up. And then I'll show you guys the reassembly after we dealt with the gasket. Really quick for reference purposes, this is what the mating surface looks like on the oil filter housing. As you can see, you've got a big old coolant passage right there. That's what connected our plastic hose to the back here. And then we got the oil passages where the oil filter housing connects to. So yeah, it's kind of a hybrid system. You got cooling from coolant and you got oil filtration going on, but this is the mating surface. Not too bad, honestly, but as you can see, the natural path right here is just oil going down the side of the engine, all along here, all on the back and making just a huge mess. So I'm gonna clean this up really quick and then we are gonna deal with the gasket. Okay, so now that we have cleaned most of our contact surface here and I took the oil filter housing to the solvent tank. I cleaned this up a little bit, but obviously there's gonna be oil coming out of this continuously, so you kind of be, be careful. For the purpose of the video right now, I'm just gonna show you right here, but um, we're gonna carefully pry the old, nasty, brittle, and broken gasket out of the housing. It should hopefully come out in one piece. It might be so brittle that It'll break as you're removing it. So far, so good. But yeah, it's pretty much the process right here. Oh, yep, there you go. It's pretty, pretty much in one piece. So here we go. 
That's the old gasket. I can feel there's not a lot of flex to it. It's very brittle. The contact surface probably just kind of gave out and ended up leaking, but we're going to clean this just a little bit more and then we're going to be able to put in our new gasket and pretty much install in a reverse process. Here we have the new gasket. This is part number 11428. 637821. I'm going to link everything in the description, of course, as usual. But this is the new gasket that we are going to very carefully install just the way that we took the other one out. Well, obviously not the way because we're not going to use a pick to install this. But right away, you'll be, you're going to be able to see this is a lot softer. There's a lot more give to it. Also, it's not as mushroomed or as like crushed as the old one was. So this should give us a much better seal and prevent leaks for a very long time. I'm not entirely sure what the interval of this part is, but I think we're in pretty good shape. So at this point, we're gonna be able to reinstall this and have one more leak eliminated. So get most of these parts out of the way. First things first, we need to get our old bolts back in. So we got the really long bolt at the top that was the one up there. Then we got the short one down in the bottom corner. So make sure you get all of these kind of started, hand threading them in. And now that we have that in place, we should be able to hopefully fedangle this last one. Yep, there you go, into its spot. All right, so I got all the bolts started. So I'm gonna start tightening these down and then we're going to tighten them according to spec and work our way through the rest of the process. Get this one all the way tightened. Again, I apologize about the awkward angle and my arms are always in the way, but you get the idea. Hopefully, hopefully this is helping you out. So I'm almost all the way in with that bolt. So I'm just gonna back off at this point and start taking care of the other ones so we can get a nice and even contact surface. There you go. <laughs> Better angle right there. Cool. And now last but not least, we have the one down here, which we're gonna tighten as well. Get a couple of these out of the way. Actually, it might be easier to face, face the tool downwards. I don't know, actually. There you go. All right. So all my bolts are torqued to spec at this point. As always, I put all my specs in the description. So next up, we have our two electrical connectors. We have this top one right here. And then we got our bottom one here. And now, all we gotta do is reconnect our coolant hose, our top coolant hose, and then we are just about done in this general vicinity. Let's go ahead and reinstall the snorkel and the air box, and then we're just about done. So here we have our snorkel that is going back on. You got your two bolts, your Torx bits right here, your Torx bolts, one on the left, one on the right. There we go. Here we are guys, the last piece of the puzzle. At this point, very carefully put your air filter box back in. Make sure that your snorkel is aligned then make sure that your accordion, is that the right word? Accordion, accordion hose in the back here is attached as well as your electrical connector. There we go, nice and snug. Remember to tighten your hose clamp of your intake hose. You don't want that loose. You don't want that disconnecting by any chance. And then last but not least, we have our two 10 millimeter bolts that are gonna be going right here, and then you're done. There we are. Pretty straightforward if you ask me. That top bolt, the one behind the intake manifold, 
make sure you have a quarter inch E10 socket available to you or use one of these universal sockets. They work pretty well in my experience. However, as I said, use at your own risk. I don't want to be responsible for any strip bolts or anything like that. That being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. If this did help you out, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And guys, I will see you in the next video. Oh,